While lamb enjoys a reputation for being the tastiest of red meat, producers have four problems with the image of lamb. Over fatness, the small size of chops compared with pork, the high cost of processing for added value due to the small carcass size, and poor performance in meat-eating quality in terms of flavour, tenderness and juiciness due to changes in the diet prior to slaughter. For sheep, we um, concentrated there again on, on the um, ability to take lambs to, to heavier weights. Sheep have a, a major disadvantage compared to the other uh, meat species in that they have uh, relatively high costs of, of production and therefore if we, if we can get higher carcass weights per ewe per annum, that's uh, going to help in the, in the cost of production. We also, in, in the case of the sheep, did some um, enhancements on the um, production methods on farm to minimise stress at weaning and so on. When we put these packages together, again with sheep, we found that uh, taking lambs to the highest load of weights had no detrimental effect on, on eating quality. And in all three species that we've looked at, we've seen uh, further enhancements to the eating quality by applying uh, enhanced post-slaughter treatments, in particular considerate chilling, ageing of carcasses, uh, hip suspension and electrical stimulation. All of those things help to further enhance eating quality. In 2004, only 55% of new season lamb processed in Scotland met the core grades of E, U, R, 2 and 3L. Clearly then, we need to improve the selection of lambs for slaughter to meet target fat class and confirmation. Maximum market prices are paid for carcasses meeting finish and confirmation targets in the weight range of 16 to 21 and a half kilograms. Consumers' needs for larger chops and leaner lambs are currently converging with farmer and processor needs for better conformed leaner lambs in terms of a more saleable product for the farmer and lower processing costs for the abattoir. However, some processors' core specification is up to a maximum carcass weight of 21 and a half kilos. Therefore, one of the most important steps is for you to keep in regular contact with your buyers to be sure of their weight and grade specifications. This is Wester Tulik on the south side of Loch Tay. It's run by Ian Duncan Miller of Aberfeldy, who's also chairman of Highland Glen Producers, a marketing group handling more than 30,000 lambs a year. To maximise returns from Wester Tulik, Ian lays great store in genetic improvement. We've seen, seen a change over the years, particularly when we've been into uh, trying to record the, the performance of these sheep, but we, traditionally we were selling at about 15 kilos or thereabouts, which was about the, as fat as, as, as heavy as we could get them at the right level of, of fat finish on the lambs. Um, but latterly we've been taking them up to over 17 kilos. Uh, so we, we are starting to see the results come through. And 17 kilos gives us an option of buyers, and they're all marketed through the Highland Glen Group. When you say 17 kilos, are you running the risk no there of going over fat with those lambs? Not as yet, no, because we do select them when they come to the right level of fat finish. And uh, really, to some extent, we've got to take the weight that's available at that time. Uh, so over the years, we've been able to get them to a heavier weight, and at the same time, making sure we're not putting them over fat. Because if we get over fat, then we're putting extra effort and feed into them, and we actually get penalised at the end of the day. So how are you achieving that extra weight but not going over fat? Well, uh, in nine, I think it was 96, 97, we took the decision to start recording. And we've been recording the performance of the, of the blackies here. We've got a nucleus flock of 200. And we've been trying to identify those families and individuals which do particularly well on, on this farm. Uh, and that's what started me off. I, I have no particular wish to be selling tups or whatever. That wasn't the driver for this. The driver was to find out the, the sheep which did best, produce the heaviest lambs, produce the most lambs. Uh, and so uh, we've been doing that since 96, uh, and we joined the SIR reference scheme in 2000. And really it's since we joined the reference scheme that we've started to see uh, a bigger rate of improvement. Uh, and that has allowed us to increase the, the, the genetic potential of the blackies. And we've also introduced a few cross uh, Texel sheep into it as well. So there's a few cross lambs, uh, the, pure the poorer blackies are crossed to a Texel. Uh, and the, the best blackies obviously are kept within the nucleus flock and they're recorded and their performance is enhanced using the, the best individuals, uh, using the, the top lambs bred on the farm and the, the reference size as well. You're getting heavier lambs as a result of your performance recording. 
Are there any other benefits that you're getting? Well, it, there are a lot of benefits to it. There, there are actually more benefits to it than, than perhaps I realised when I first started. Uh, because originally we thought, well, we want to get heavy alarms, it's quite simple. But actually the index we're using is, is what was, is refer, referred to as uh, a maternal index. Uh, and it is recording those traits and characteristics which are particular to the female side of the breed. So we're getting the ewes that do well, uh, the ewes which perform on this, that milk on, on what's available to them here at Westertula in the springtime. Uh, and so that, that means that the ewes are performing themselves better, they're milking better. But there are actually hidden benefits as well because uh, the computer remembers who's related to who, the cousins and the second cousins and the third cousins, which we as individual people, we, we haven't hope of doing that. So if you've got a difficult lambing uh, and you maybe save a lamb and that's fine, that's what, what, what Mark's here to do, uh, that, that's good. But what the computer remembers is that that sheep was probably related to the one that had a, a hung lamb last week. And the index uh, counts against those sheep and counts in favour of the ones which help themselves. So there are hidden benefits come through there which I wasn't expecting. So how does it feel actually using a computer printout to help with selection? It feels good, it gives us extra profit um, because that's what the, the, the whole driver of this is, profit. Uh, and uh, if it gives us big alarms which I can sell for more money, uh, then I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very pleased with the setup. And it's at the moment it seems to be working that way. We've got two extra kilos of lamb uh, to sell on each lamb. Uh, and across 350, 400 lambs to sell each year, uh, that's a bit of money worth having and it's, uh, it doesn't cost any extra each year. We've, in, we've invested in genetic improvement, but once you get the, that improvement, it is permanent. Have you calculated a financial figure as to how much you're benefiting from it? It's, uh, it's perhaps difficult here to say how much is due to the fact we've got a few cross lambs and how much is due to the improved blackies, but perhaps the best figures I can use is one of the other uh, members of the Thai reference scheme who has got uh, a 2,000 ewe flock and a nucleus of 400. And over a 10 year period, he put about two and a half kilos onto all his lambs, not just from the 400, but all his lambs. And that worked out at 10,000 pounds extra profit each and every year as a direct result of the genetic improvement.